Good evening, it is eight o'clock and you know what that means. It is time for this week's Woman of the Week. And this week it's singer-songwriter Reva Taylor. Now, Reva started in music at a very young age. She got her first job in the West End production of Les Miserables as young Eponine at the age of seven. And she was the youngest person to be signed to Emmy Records at the age of 12. And 20 years later, she's released an album called This Woman's Heart. And when talking to Reva, um, I really wanted to know, first of all, what being a child star is actually like and how it influenced her later career. Music has, has been my life, really, and I can't really remember a time or a decent amount of time where I, I haven't been been performing or singing. Um, I, I started off, yeah, as you say, when I was very young in the West End, so I, I got my first role when I was seven, and um, that naturally kind of led its way into me um, doing a few other bits. Um, I was on, I don't even remember, Blue Peter, but I was on Blue Peter when I was 10. And that was just something that I really wanted to do, like get up there and sing. And I sent off a tape to them, so, you know, they had this like spotlight thing. So I just loved singing. Um, and um, when I was 12, I got my first record deal. So it's been a big part of my life for forever, you know, and um it's always been something that I've done alongside education up until a certain age. So I was in full-time school until I was 18 um, while I had my deal. Uh, so it was very, it was a funny, funny childhood really and funny teen uh, period because, um, you know, I'd be singing and, and touring with, with that and um, been very lucky to, to go over to some, some cool countries and explore places that I never would have otherwise, I think. Um, but also I kind of kept my head down and, and, and kept up with the education so yeah it was a funny time growing up what kind of music do you listen to now and how has your music cha- how has your music taste kind of like changed as you've grown up there's a lot of music that I don't love at the moment I have to say um I struggle with the, with the modern way of consuming music I love it I'm on Spotify I'm on Apple Music um I'm interested by what people are putting out um there is just so much um, is the truth and actually sort of I, I come from a place of I, I would say I'm an album listener um, I like to invest in an artist I like to listen to um, someone's journey from start to finish or have a favorite album that I keep dipping into um, and I don't like the fact that I no longer have that connection that I used to with music um, like you know digging out my favourite album, physically putting it on in a car or whatever. Um, the artist that I love, I'm loving Celeste at the moment. Um, I think she's great. I think she's got a brilliant, soulful voice. Um, she's definitely an artist that I would want to listen to for more than one song. Um, I've always been a, a big fan of, of the big, um, powerful female belters. And I'm not saying that because I'm... <laughs> I want all women's only hour. Um, but I really have. I grew up listening to Annie Lennox, to Kate Bush. Um, and even now, you know, Gar- Lady Gaga, I love. I love um, I love how dynamic her music is um, and that she can put, um, you know, one minute uh, an acoustic ballad out there um, and rock it. And then, you know, she can, she can have something that's fully produced up. So I like a bit of drama. With, with music I like dynamics do you see yourself kind of being inspired by those people in your own music or do you try and like be really unique and make your own style I think all artists are always inspired by others and I think that's the way that we evolve and the way that music evolves otherwise we'd all still be sort of singing the same way for years and years and years um obviously I try to keep it authentic to myself um and often you're you'll have a conversation in the studio, you know, oh yeah, remember that Imagine Dragons track? It's a touch of that, you know, it's the guitar sound in that and then it's the rawness of an Adele track and it's a... So, you know, you'll use artists as references, but I think in doing that, create your own your own sound and your own direction. And then, you know, no one else has got your voice. Um, so that's always putting your, your own unique um, stamp on things. Mm-hmm. 
you've obviously got a very powerful voice which I guess has kind of come from your just years of crafting I think I've always had I mean I'd even say I had a bigger voice when I was younger because it was bigger by comparison of the size of me (laughs) (laughs) I've always had a big voice and then you know everyone else is kind of caught up and we've all become adults and and I sound like an adult and I sounded like an adult when I was younger weirdly um so it no longer feels so big but I guess it is yes it has the capacity to to be a big sound um but I also like playing around with it and I think you'll hear on the next single that's out on Friday it's um actually you're the first person I'm telling it's called Celebrate Mm -hmm. and um it's it's my very smallest voice in fact I'm barely singing on it and there are moments where the big voice comes out actually in the chorus as a sort of hook where I sing Celebrate but apart from that it's um it's very intimate so um so yeah, and for me, that's that's part of my evolution, I suppose. I've always used this big voice, and for me, taking a step back and using a very different voice on this, I think is, yeah, is a challenge for me, and pushing my boundaries musically. The song I've actually, I really want to play kind of in this part of the interview is uh, This Woman's Heart. What can you tell me about this song and um, how it came about? Yeah, This Woman's Heart is a song that's very personal to me. It, a song that I wrote about, um, well, about the people in our lives who help us through challenging times. And um, for me, it was like one special person. Um, and I hope when people listen to it, they think of that person or those people or that thing, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, going through some of the more challenging things in life um, and the people that help us through those. And it's funny because it's a song that I've revisited, you know, during this time and, and people have messaged me about because um, these are the times that, that I think a lot of us have reflected on that um, and who makes our lives whole. Um, so, so, yeah, that's what this woman's heart's about. This Woman's Heart by Reva Taylor. She is this week's Woman of the Week. Now, Reva has been very busy in lockdown. She's taken part in the smiling sessions, just like Marisha Wallace last week, if you were listening to that, uh, online, the smiling sessions, uh, to bring some musical joy to some people who are isolated or in care homes or just generally lonely, something to sing along to. And in her video, uh, she sang Moon River. Um, Go and check that out on YouTube. Um, It's beautiful. Her voice is just... Amazing, isn't it? I mean, you just heard uh, this woman's heart, so you'll know. Uh, But she's also been supporting other female creatives during lockdown as well um, by setting up the Creative Light Sessions. And this is a chance for women in her industry and women in the arts industry in general to virtually come together and talk about stuff that's important to them. And this support for female artists is very much needed at the moment because, as Ruva explains in this next interview part, uh, the music industry can be a very tough place for women. A lot of artists have raised um, the challenges of being a female artist, um, being in a male dominated largely when it comes to um, the decision makers in a male environment, um, and also obviously the um, the sexualization of a lot of <laughs> pop stars. Um, it's something that I have never. I don't know if this is because I started young and. Some people in the industry know of me as being this young girl still, perhaps, um, or whether whether I'm, you know, I, I'm not doing the sexy thing sexy enough. <laughs> but it just hasn't. It hasn't been an issue, for me, which I think is a really good thing. Um, I work with teams of men and women. A lot of a lot of the people I work with are women, but my manager is, is a guy, <laughs> um, and I have never had an issue. So, so yeah, I think it's about having your wits wits about you in the industry. Obviously, um, like I said, when I was younger, um, I was controlled by a, a big major label. Um, now I'm, you know, doing sort of a quasi deal with a label, but I'm I'm running a lot myself. And again, that that I think tips the the um, the balance of control. Um, so you know who's to say if I you know signed signed everything away that that, that we wouldn't encounter problems um, I think that can often happen but I think at the moment because there's a lot of control with with me which I'm so happy about and I think being in lockdown has been um, 
a great time to show that where I've been able to work really closely with the team and, and decide with them, do I release music or do I not? I know a lot of artists haven't been able to meet, uh, release music in this time because, um, you know, the labels that they're bound to have said no. No, we have to wait till we're out of this time, till we know what we're doing, till we have more money, till whatever it is. Um, I think that's been a real blessing, um, being able to just keep things going, because I think that's what we're all wanting to do now. One thing you have been doing, I saw, was the creative light sessions. Can, what can you tell me about the, the creative light sessions and, and how they came about? Was this a lockdown thing? It was a lockdown thing. And it's, um, yeah, the beginning of the year, I've been developing something called the actually TWH, or This Woman's Heart, um community and um we were due to actually launch it with a, an exhibition a physical exhibition in london um combining the worlds of art and music and we were going to explore um 21st century protect- perceptions of, of womanhood um anyway obviously lockdown happened um we couldn't do everything that we wanted to do and that will be happening at at another another point but um I didn't want to just just lock, you know, lock down this woman's heart community too. I wanted to um, at least keep that sort of those conversations going because there were already some lots of lovely people who were jumping on board. And as I say, it welcomes women across the arts. So um, you know, I've spoken to women in the dance world, um, uh, creative writing, uh, art, art curators for exhibitions, um, and of course music, um, touching on themes of you know race mental health um, and how art has helped them yeah, positively um, refocus or, or help others actually. Um, it's not just focused on, on them, although for a lot of them it is, um, but in times of, of change and challenge. And obviously during lockdown, there was a lot of conversation about art and the power of art um, or artistic disciplines. Um, in people's well-being and mental health so so those are some really nice conversations and um and yeah I'm going to be picking those up again um in another form um towards the end of the year and, and early next year so we're just developing that at the moment awesome I guess it's also kind of quite therapeutic as well to talk to people in your own industry isn't it absolutely yeah absolutely and, and it's interesting you say that because people say why did you set this up and it's like not only do I feel passionately that the arts are this this amazing form um of being able to heal um and refocus us but um it also comes from a place of having felt quite lonely I think in an industry for a long time and not realizing that you can ally with other people and being a solo artist is quite a lonely thing it used to be more more I keep saying lonely I mean not the most lonely thing in the world but I felt I felt slightly al- alone in what I was doing um, as a young girl growing up in the industry because um, I, you know, I didn't travel with a band or I just turned up and it was sort of everything was done for me um, I was incredibly lucky as an artist in that respect but now I, I have a band I've got a lot of friends who are in the business a lot of writing friends who you know nobody knows but they're, they're a completely different breed of musician actually you know, they, they don't care about having their face in the public eye but they they, you know they're all about the music and, it, and it's just been really nice um getting new um establishing new relationships with people um and obviously there are a lot of women um who also feel just the same is there kind of like one woman like one female artist who is like your top dog oh goodness me do you know what this is really hard because i've got all sorts of names flying around i don't know who you're gonna who the audience wants to hear as well but it's got to be for me hasn't it do you know i'm gonna put on I'm going to put on Annie Lennox, No More I Love. No, I'm going to put on Annie Lennox, Little Bird, because it's uplifting. That's Little Bird, Annie Lennox on Gorgeous FM. You're listening to the Women in Music show. Uh, And at the moment, uh, it's the Woman of the Week section of the show. Um, And this week, it's Reva Taylor. Uh, She's a singer-songwriter from London. And in this final part of our chat, we talk about what the future holds for her. But more importantly, her new two-part album, This Woman's Heart. The first part of the album is out now on all major streaming platforms. uh, But the second part will be out in the new year. 
The first part is all about heartbreak, actually. It's the broken heart. It's the um, the darkness before the light. Um, so these first, the compilation of uh, seven songs on there are very much touching, not just, you know, sonically, some of them feel uplifting to listen to, but the sentiment is, is a little bit deeper and darker. Um, so that's this woman's heart point one. This, this second part of the album, of which I've released one song already, uh, if I Can Ever Stop Loving You and the next one, Celebrate, is coming out um, on Friday. They're about a positive future. They're about a resolved heart and about um, moving on through life and and um, being more accepting of, a, of, of the, the reality and, and the present that you're in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I absolutely love If I Can Ever Stop Loving You. I was just... I, I've been playing it on repeat ever since I just discovered you as an artist. <laughs> Oh, thank you powerful isn't it it's like it builds throughout the song and it starts kind of like quiet and then it just goes in like a proper big chorus um yeah. is that kind of would you say that's your favorite one that's going to come out like in on the next album or oh. have you got like a you know, favorite song out of this woman's heart in general i it's such a different one because i i i Fall, I don't want to say I fall out of love. I never fall out of love with songs, but I fall back in love with songs um, again and again. This Woman's Heart, for me, is in the song. Um, it is one that will always have a place for me. Um, on this next part of the album, I love If I Could Ever Stop Loving You. I actually wrote it a few years ago now. While most of the songs on the second part are actually written in lockdown, um, that one was written a few years ago, and it just felt like this was the right moment to release it. Uh, but actually, because there's such a, a, a difference in the dynamics of shift between the songs, there's I, I love celebrate for completely different reasons. Celebrate's about about grief. It's about the very sort of the very um, saddest form of loss. Um, but something that we all either have experienced or sadly will experience in life. But it's about accepting and celebrating um, life and, and allowing people to move on um, out of this life. So it's it's quite a deep song um, packaged up in a very fragile way. Um, so that has a completely different um, connection for me and a very special place as well. Um, so. I can't give you an answer because there are other, there's another song called Magic. I'm, I haven't told anyone that name, um, but there is a song called Like Magic, and and that's a really exciting song for me. It's quite a raw, I wrote it in Nashville, a raw sounding, almost like Stevie Nicks, modern Stevie Nicks kind of vibe, and and it feels like with that song, I've sort of tipped into a slightly different space, um, a future space um, of possibly where where I am now. Um, which which is something that's quite excited me. What's in the future for for Reva Taylor? What have you got planned? And are you planning to do any more stuff in lockdown? Kind of like any live sessions or um, what? What does the future yeah, hold for you? The future hold. Um, so obviously, I've done my like, you know, music videos this week. We're releasing the next single. Uh, I'm doing a live session actually, um, just me and, and a musician. End of next week, so that's going to be coming out virtually. Um, and uh, that's quite exciting and um, so that's this side of Christmas then it's a new single next year um, followed by the album so um, in terms of live I mean unfortunately we can't really get out and perform live at the moment um, and I know the live world and my agent's very frustrated by that <laughs> um, but we're keeping hopeful and, and hopefully we will be really soon. I mean me as a music lover like I'm just craving to go to a gig right now so you on the other oh, side of being the, the artist performing, you must just be like exactly the same, if not worse. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it's so great when you hear that because um, you realise that the live world is going to come back. Um, a little bit like, you know, I don't think virtual working is for forever because people feed off other people's energy and being in the same space. So, um, you know, we do have to have live live music again because um, it's, it's a two-way process, isn't it? Um, I, I love performing live because I love performing to people and hopefully they, they like the same thing. So, um, so yeah. And finally, I am going to play If I Could Ever Stop Loving You just because it's a total banger. Can you describe this song? Yeah, If I Could Ever Stop Loving You is, um, is a song about acceptance. It's a song about instead of looking at a relationship and love um, and something, a happy chapter ending and seeing it as forever. Um, 
it's it's about um again to use that word celebration it's about celebrating love and that actually love can continue to exist for somebody out of respect even if you're not together so um so yeah I think it's got that kind of euphoric feeling of being that I've moved on from you know from a situation from from a relationship um that meant a great deal to you but Mm -hmm. um but that that and you still have that love for that person um whatever they choose to do um and whatever you choose to do so um so yes it's it's a resolved and accepting song about love can you now um introduce your song in true radio style uh for gorgeous fm of course uh thank you for listening um i am reva taylor and this is my latest single if i could ever stop loving you love acceptance and embracing of all we are gorgeous fm Isn't Reva Taylor just such a gem of a human being? Uh, She was my woman of the week this week. It was awesome to have a chat to her about her career, how she supports other female creatives, and of course her new album. Uh, You can follow Reva's journey on all her social media platforms. Her Twitter Twitter handle is I am Reva Taylor, Reva being spelt R-I-V-A. Uh, and her Instagram is just Reva Taylor. Uh, she's also on Facebook. And her new single, Celebrate, comes out tomorrow on all major streaming platforms. And the first part of her two part album, This Woman's Heart, is also out now. And I want to thank Reva and her team for making that interview happen. Awesome. If you know.